For a fixed income portfolio, GICs and bonds are going to be predominantly consisting in those fixed income portfolios. A GIC is um, a little simpler to purchase. You can walk into any financial institution, onto any brokerage house, and you'll buy a GIC. It's going to have a specific term and it's going to have a specific interest rate and that's guaranteed over the lifetime of that GIC. It's taxed as interest income and uh, you can get them in short terms and up to long term GICs for five years. Where bonds, they, um, they trade a little differently. Their prices change on a day to day basis and most bonds that you're going to be purchasing are going to be incorporated into some type of mutual fund. Uh, and again, those prices fluctuate, uh, but there are much more liquidity regarding those bond portfolios than that of a GIC. The downside of the GIC can be if you're locked in for a five year period and you start to see interest rates rise, you're fixed and stuck with the interest rate that you signed at the time of offering. And you have to hold that until maturity. Where with bonds, there's more liquidity around them. So those prices can fluctuate depending on what the interest rate environment does. And if you ever need it for emergencies, bonds trade over the counter, so they're easily accessible and somebody else would be able to buy those bonds from you. Whereas again, a GIC, you're locked for that entire period of the term of the GIC. What happens with a bond in a rising interest rate environment? A GIC becomes much more attractive because a GIC offers you deposit insurance and a guaranteed rate. Uh, where a bond does not offer those features. So when interest rates start to rise, the bond prices will start to fall simply because it's more attractive to go and purchase a GIC for the sometimes same term at a higher interest rate.